I've loved chainsaws since I was old enough to hear that whine and smell that smoke and watch my dad flip that thing around like it didn't weigh over about two pounds. The way the chips just blow out of the back of a sharp saw, the way that a saw will take a big tree to the ground in moments. This is the assortment of chainsaws that I have here in my shop. All six of these chainsaws have a lot of things in common and a few things that are unique to each one. The first thing that I want to mention that they have in common is they are dangerous. Now, you can see that, you can sense it, you can tell by the sound they make that they're dangerous. But when you pick one up, there's a couple things that you need to be aware of. Okay. I'm going to start with this little husky. It's a 136. I'm doing that for two reasons. One, because it doesn't weigh much and I might talk for a few minutes. And the second is because it's likely that you're going to want to buy something about like this. If you're a homeowner or a do-it-yourselfer, if you're someone that's got a few fruit trees or you cut a little bit of firewood or you need to, you know, fill in the blank. It is simultaneously safe because it's light enough to pick up and move around and dangerous precisely because it's light enough to pick up and move around. So my recommendation is that you buy one of these new. Now I buy a lot of used stuff. I don't buy used chainsaws. Unless you are a small engine expert with some experience with chainsaws, do yourself a favor and buy a new one. It's going to come with a shield, with a sheath. Keep it. This thing protects the chain and your kids, all right? Now, a chainsaw sitting around on a bench, if it's sharp, will cut you, even if it's not running. And on the other hand, if you drop it or bang it against the edge of a table leg or something, you're going to knock a point off a chain, and the points are what make the difference. So, back to my assertion that the lightness and maneuverability is simultaneously safety and danger. You can hold this. You can lift it over your head. That's good. But because it's light, kickback, which is what always cuts novices, is going to happen in a moment because you have no inertia in the weight of the machine. Kickback happens when you use the end of the bar and the energy is transmitted away from a pulling moment or a pushing moment to a lifting moment. You put that spinning blade in contact with an immovable object, it is going to run up that immovable object and it is headed directly towards the center line of whoever is operating it. This leaves a nasty mark. Now this chain brake is now a safety requirement. They can't sell a chainsaw now without a chain brake to stop that very thing. As the saw is coming back and getting ready to eat your lunch, the chain brake is to be engaged with the back of your hand. Now this is exactly like a guard on a skill saw. Professionals become impatient and they think it cramps their style and they'll disable it or cut it off and it's a mistake, boys. It's always a mistake. Now it's a mistake that I've made but it's a mistake. That thing will save you. One of the reasons chainsaws are dangerous is because they are used in every conceivable position. People use them on ladders, people use them standing in trees, people use them on the ground and at benches and bending over and overhead. And so you're going to be using it in a multitude of, uh, you're going to be holding it in a wide range of ways. Make a mental note. If the grip on your top hand moves out of alignment with the chain brake, Make sure you never stop thinking, okay, if that kicks back, the chain brake's not going to stop at this time. So there are a few mental markers you have to lay down if you intend to do this without the benefit of stitches. Okay? So let's talk about the difference in kickback risk between a little saw and a big one. I'll use this, hus this little Husky and this Johnsered as an example. Interesting that both are Swedish saws. Husqvarna, Johnsered. It kind of tickles me because I'm 50% Swedish, okay? I don't know if I have... There's some sort of a genetic affinity for Swedish saws. But let me get this out in the open. Still is my go-to tool, so there must be some Teutonic German in the mix there someplace. Anyway, kickback. So the nose of this saw is about 30 inches away from where my left hand is. So if the kickback happens... Oh, let me point out, my dad removed the chain brake, okay? <laughs> this is my dad's saw chain brake had to go, old school, we get this. If the kickback happens with this saw, you have that additional time for your brain to register danger and do something about it. That is offset by the fact this is so much more powerful 
So when this begins to run up a piece, when you get out on the nose and don't pay attention or it binds up, bad things can happen. So the size to danger ratio is not linear. In fact, in many ways, it's not even related or relatable. So one of these saws is radically different than the other. Ta-da! This is an electric. So for a long time, of course, I just curled my lip at electric chainsaws. And then it gradually dawned on me, man, if all you're doing is pruning a fruit tree, cutting a two by four, you know, trimming up your rose bushes, you don't need one of these things. An electric saw requires almost zero maintenance. You plug it in, it's gonna go. If you keep it sharp, it's gonna cut. But don't make the mistake of thinking this is gonna cut your year's supply of firewood. If you buy one, like every other tool, buy the very best you can possibly afford. But for about nine out of 10 homeowners, this is what you need. First of all, a chainsaw does not have a blade. Never say that. It's so annoying and it'll brand you a rank amateur. A chainsaw has a bar and a chain, okay? There's not a blade to be found any place. Chains come in a wide, well chains and bars for that matter, come in a wide variety of um, types specifications for different purposes. We're not getting into the weeds on that today. We will sometime. I just want to point out that you can buy them to fit an individual bar length, okay? This is for, I think, a 26 inch bar. Or, for professional use, you can buy chain by the roll. Miles of this stuff, and then you make your own, you put your link in, you, anyhow, you make chains. So, it's not magic, but it is not a blade. Please never call it that, okay? So hopefully it's obvious, but chainsaws require personal protective yeah. equipment. Those of you who have seen my other videos, though, right now are saying, wait a minute, hypocrite, wait a minute, hypocrite. Think of me as a doctor that smokes, okay? Just because I should always do it doesn't mean I always do it, but I think I should. Here is the gear, chaps, put them on. Some sort of hearing protection. Earplugs are great. I mean, earmuffs are great. I could never wear this, but you gotta have a hard hat in the woods, earmuffs, earplugs, eye protection, you gotta have it, some sort of gloves to dampen the vibration and protect your hands when you're filing. This is not a place to hold back on safety gear if you wanna be able to continue to work for the rest of your life. I feel pretty bulletproof right now. So I've got two saws here, I've got a little bitty one, and my go-to daily driver, the Steel 044, which I just really like. This is for working around the yard. My wife has long wanted a chainsaw, and I've told her, you know, that's the last thing on the planet I'm ever going to buy you. She's a thrasher. She would clear cut the property. But I'm just going to demonstrate the difference in safety between the back of the bar and the front of the bar and the top of the bar. So when you buy your chainsaw and you get it out of the box and you mix the fuel and you fuel it up and you start it and you're ready to cut something, start cutting with this part of the bar. It's going to be pulling your chainsaw into the wood. The chainsaw will come to rest against the piece. It's very safe, okay? Second safest is the top of the bar, which I'll demonstrate right now. That is essentially equally safe, but you are resisting the energy pushing you out of the log, which is pushing you towards a position where you could get a kickback, like this. Coming back towards my face, 
That's a safety feature that will protect you. Don't defeat it. So especially on a small saw, you need to develop the momentum or the inertia of the chain in motion before you bring it into contact with the wood. That is why you stay away from the tip if you're not fully qualified. I'm going to demonstrate cutting with the tip of the saw. Sometimes you have to do it. But this is another one of those conditions where as you bring the chain up to speed and bring it in contact with an immo immobile object, the danger increases exponentially. So as you can see, the tip of the bar is very important, very dangerous. Don't try it until you get some idea of the forces involved and the strength you've got to have to resist them. Chainsaw safety is sort of like driving safely. So some part of it is control some part of it's controlling the saw, but an equal part is understanding the environment that you're using the saw in. In the same way that driving a car in a downtown crowded five o'clock city environment is a different set of dangers than driving on an extended trip on an interstate freeway. Using your chainsaw up on a ladder pruning a fruit, fruit tree, and by the way that's almost a death wish unless it is just very light pruning, is radically a radically different set of environmental dangers than if you're out cutting firewood or logging or who knows what. So my point is chainsaws are usually used in areas of uncertain footing pieces of firewood and bark and limbs on the ground. You are cutting things where gravity is going to initiate a fall. There's all sorts of uncontrollable forces that are released at that time. When a log's on the ground, if the ground's not level, that log would really like to roll. So part of the skill set of staying alive as a chainsaw operator is recognize, recognizing the implied threats in the environment that you're taking the chainsaw into. Use your head. It's the best piece of safety equipment God gave you. You buy a chainsaw, you're going to begin to feel like a man in a way that maybe is new to you. And the second thing that's going to happen is when you pick that thing up and pull the trigger, there's going to be an intimidation factor that's going to make you feel like a little boy again. So <laughs> you can listen to both those impulses. Enjoy owning the saw. Enjoy being smart. Enjoy overcoming your fear. Enjoy understanding the risks that you're facing. And go cut some wood, will you? Now for the record, and not strictly out of an impulse to be politically correct to a mass audience, women are fully capable of running chainsaws and living to tell. My daughter has a chainsaw. She's plenty strong, plenty smart, plenty fast, and she has a lot of fun with it. But uh, it's an equal opportunity work producer. It's an equal opportunity destroyer. Be careful. Cut some wood. Thanks for watching.